All right, so let's talk about molarity, 2.3, molarity. It says, explain why using molarity is better than using terms such as dilute or concentrated. Well, the words dilute and concentrated are very vague and they're open to interpretation. Your idea of dilute might be different than my idea of dilute, and there's no way to numerically uh, compare them. So molarity is based on math and numbers, so we can easily compare stuff. Uh, remember, molarity is the number of moles that you have in your solution divided by the volume of the solution. So we know exactly the ratio between the moles and the whole volume. So if we see a label that says five with a big M next to it, that, that means we know that one liter of the solution would contain five moles. And there's a ratio, five moles in every one liter. And then we read it five molar hydrochloric acid. Now you might have 500 liters, you might have two liters, you might have a half a liter. But if you had one liter, it would have five moles. And this is used as a ratio or a conversion factor. So whenever you want to calculate the molarity, you want to figure out what this value is, you take how many moles you have and you divide it by your volume. We know that this particular solution has 4.0 moles of calcium chloride dissolved in 2.5 liters of solution. Now it's the whole solution, by the way. It's not just the water that's added to the flask. It's the entire solution. And if we do 4.0 divided by 2.5, we end up with 1.6. Now that's the molarity. So we put a big M next to it, because everybody who knows science knows that that means molarity. It really means that this ratio is the same as having 1.6 moles of calcium chloride dissolved in one liter of solution. So this 4 to 2.5 is the same as a 1.6 to 1. They're the same ratio. This is what you should be thinking anytime you see molarity. Now, the next problem says, what's the molarity? But the catch is, it doesn't give you the moles. It gives you the mass. But you know enough about mass and moles to can quickly convert this over to moles, because it has to be moles on top divided by solution, not mass. So let's get rid of the 100 grams first. Let's go get rid of grams, and let's go to moles, and then we can plug moles in. So we know that one mole on the periodic table has a mass of whatever one magnesium plus one sulfur plus four oxygens weighs. So if you look on the periodic table, magnesium is 24.3, sulfur is 32.1, and oxygen is 16.0, and there's four of them, so that's 64 grams. And we add all this up, and for one mole of magnesium, you get 120.4 grams. Now that's the grams per mole. We have 100 grams, so we're going to do our math quickly. And let me create some space here and calculate how many moles there are. So this is equal to point, and since we started with four digits there, I'm going to keep four in my answer. 0.8306 moles. So that's the number of moles. Now, I want to calculate the molarity. So I need to know moles on top, which I have, 0.8306 moles, divided by my volume of the solution, 1.3 liters of solution. So I divide the two and end up with 0.64, big capital M. That's saying that if I had one liter of solution, I would have 0 0.64 moles in it. So that's my ratio, 0.64 moles per one liter. That's my molarity. I just like to rewrite it as a big capital M. All right, four steps in involved in making a solution. I first put some water, fill it about halfway, not a big deal here. You don't have to measure or anything. Just get some water in there. Then you're going to dump in your solute, and some of that solute is immediately going to dissolve in the water. Uh, you have to know how much solute, so that's where you have to do your calculations beforehand. And then once you put your little bit of water and then you dump in your solute, you want to swirl it to dissolve. And then you're just going to keep adding more and more water until you've reached that line on the neck of the flask. So we're going to use volumetric flasks. Remember, they were kind of the round bottom with a long skinny neck. There's a line on there somewhere. That line tells you <clears throat> where the uh, volume, so this is like a 500 milliliter flask. That line tells you 
this is where the 0.5 liter mark is, or the 500 milliliter mark. All right, so imagine you want to make, I want to move this, a one liter uh, solution of a one molar sodium chloride solution. Now, this is nice and easy because I'm making one liter and it's one molar. That's what molarity is. How many moles for one liter? So if I'm making a one molar solution, I'm going to put one mole in to my one liter. And then that means I have a one molar solution. So all I need to do is figure out what one mole of sodium chloride is. So I add up my sodium, 23.0, plus my uh, 35.5 grams for chlorine and I get 58.5 grams. So I'm gonna go dump in 58.5 grams of salt into my flask that's got about half filled with water, and then I top it off by adding water till I get to the one liter mark. Now the next one's a little bit more complicated because it's not exactly one liter and it's not exactly one molar. So here's what I tell kids to do. Anytime you see the molarity, 0.80 molar, or 0.80 with a big capital M. You should take that M and get rid of it and rewrite it as 0.80 moles over one liter. Now it looks like a conversion factor that you can use in a dimensional analysis problem. When you see it as 0.80 molar, it looks a little confusing. Some kids mix this up. They think it's 0.08 moles, which it's not. It's molar. And they are not quite sure what to do when they have uh, other values here. So what you should do is get rid of the molar, get rid of the M, and just rewrite it as a fraction. 0.8 moles in one liter. Now, you're going to make 2.5 liters. We want to figure out what mass of potassium nitrate uh, should be added to the flask. So we want liters to cancel out. We want to end up with uh, mass. But the only catch is, the only thing we know is liters and moles. So we're going to get rid of liters and we're going to go to moles and then we're going to get rid of moles and go to grams. We'll get the mass. So what do we know? Well, moles per liters right here. We got 0 0.80 moles over one liter. So liters cancels. We've got moles. We don't want moles. We want mass. So if we just knew the molar mass of potassium nitrate, KNO3, and we do, it's right here. If I didn't give that to you, you'd have to look up on the periodic table. Add 1K, 1N, and 3 oxygens. But 1 mole is 101.1 grams of potassium nitrate. Moles cancels, and you're left with grams, which is exactly what we want. So now it just comes down to the math. 2.5 times 0.8 over 1 times 101.1 divided by 1 equals 202.2 grams. So there's your mass that you would add to the flask. So earlier, when we were talking about making a solution with a specific molarity, you would fill the flask about halfway with water, you'd add your correct amount of solute, and this is the math that you would have to do. You'd have to say, how much do I want to make? What's my molarity going to be? And then what's that mass that I want to add? So if I was doing this, I would add 202 grams right now, I would swirl it to dissolve it, and then I would keep adding water until I get to that two and a half liter line. The other thing you should keep in mind is that the milliliter to liter conversion, sometimes I might say uh, you want to make a 500 milliliter sample, you need to get it into liters. So there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. So you divide this by a thousand, or you just move your decimal point three places. So 500, boom, boom, boom. And there's your 0.5 liters. So if you read a problem and it gives you milliliters, just quick convert it over to liters. Okay? And that's the end of unit two.